Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lane's basic mathematics and this is section 14.3 which is absolutely huge and I think one of the reasons why this section is so long is because it is so ridiculously fun. It's one of those sections that let's see it's uh, like 20 pages? No, it's like 13 pages long or something like that. Some ridiculous number, right? I uh, I'm going to break this up into multiple videos, so there's going to be like some weird just cuts. I'm going to try to keep the videos about 10 minutes in length. 10 minutes seems to be the ideal length for YouTube videos nowadays. Um, anyway, so let's get started. Let J sub n be the set of integers 1 to all the way up to n. Okay, so it's a subset of the integers. Uh, the integers are going to be 1 is less than or equal to k, is less than or equal to n. So j of n has elements k, such that it includes 1, it includes n, and it includes all the integers inside. We're going to define a permutation. Now let's actually write this out properly. Not You don't start permutation with an r. Permutation sigma, we just do a circle and kind of give it a, you know, a, a cowlick on the top. So that's sigma, that's the lowercase sigma. Uppercase sigma is like kind of like a backwards three, okay? So this, we're gonna define a mapping sigma such that we start with some set, this j of n, and we're gonna to go to j of n, okay? So we're mapping these integers to themselves, okay? And the key is that when we're mapping, for every value i, it cannot equal j, if i is not equal to j, right? So we're mapping them to distinct numbers. We're not mapping, like 1 doesn't go to 2, and 2 goes to 2, and 3 goes to 2. You can't have that. They each need to go to a different number, okay? So they can't be the same numbers, okay? So the new mapping can be described just by listing out all of the mappings. All the way up to sigma n, right? And so we're going to use this notation, kind of like a table syntax, right? We're going to have square braces, and we're going to put the inputs here, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. And then we're going to have the numbers that these generate. So this is going to be sigma of 1, sigma of 2, sigma of 3, and then up here is going to be sigma of n. Okay? As an example, let's say we're taking J4, which includes the numbers 1, 2, Three, and it goes up to 4, including 4, okay? And so if we wanted to draw the mapping for sigma, we would say sigma, a sigma that can exist. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 on the top. And here we're going to have 3, 1, 4, 2, okay? So when we do sigma of 1, we're going to get 3. Sigma of 2 is 1. Sigma of 3 is 4. And sigma of 4 is 2. Notice that all of these numbers are distinct. They're, none of them are the same because of this rule up here, okay? So sigma, let's just spell this out. Sigma 1 is equal to 3. Sigma 2 is equal to 1. Sigma 3 is equal to 4. And sigma 4 is equal to 2. Okay? And note also that we're, we're, we still have the same numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just they're in a different order. Okay? All right. If we have two permutations, if we have two permutations, sigma and sigma prime, are two permutations, they're using the same j, okay? We can call the composite sigma, sigma prime, instead of using that circle, okay? And the reason why we do that is we're gonna be doing a lot of composition, and I don't wanna write the circles, and besides, it's gonna get messy. So we are going to be a little bit simple. It's gonna think, of, we're gonna think of composition here as multiplication, but this is not, sigma times sigma, okay? So this isn't like if we had, you know, sigma one is like mapping one to three, sigma two, this other sigma prime is mapping one to four, you know, it's not gonna be three times four. It's not gonna do that, okay? It's just gonna be mapping them through themselves, okay? As an example, he says we have sigma, which is equal to one, two, three, four, and maps two, three, four, what? Excuse me. Sigma prime, which takes 1, 2, 3, 4, and maps that to 3, 4, 2, 1. 
okay? Then sigma, sigma prime is going to be, well, we do sigma prime first, right? So one goes to three, three goes to four, so one goes to four, okay? And then two goes to four, four goes to one, so two goes to one. Three goes to two, two goes to three, so three goes to three. Four goes to one, one goes to two. That's sigma, sigma prime, okay? Four, two, one, three. Why did they get a different answer than me? Oh, he did sigma prime sigma. Sigma prime sigma, however, so we go one goes to two, two goes to four, so it's one, four. Two goes to three, three goes to two, so two goes to two, that's correct. Three goes to four, four goes to one, so three goes to one. Four goes to one, and then one goes to three, so four goes to three, okay? So we have two things here, sigma, sigma prime, and sigma prime, sigma, okay? And yes, it matches the book, okay? And note that this is not commutative, right? So sigma, sigma prime does not necessarily equal sigma prime, sigma. Now you can probably find mappings where that does or permutations where that does, but in this case it does not. Let's look at another example, okay? Hopefully you're starting to think that something amazing is gonna come. Something amazing is coming. It's gonna be so amazing. You're gonna go, wow, that was amazing. Okay, so sigma in this case, we just have three numbers. One, two, three, maps to two, one, three. And we have sigma prime is one, two, three, maps two, three, one, two. So sigma, sigma prime, so we apply sigma prime first. One goes to three, three goes to three, so one goes to three. Two goes to one, one goes to two, so two goes to two. Three goes to two, and two goes to one. And look at that, this is just reversing the order. That's pretty cool, okay? And uh, we can do the other one, we can do sigma prime sigma if you really want to. So we do sigma first, one goes to two, two goes to one, one goes to one. Sigma, sigma two goes to one, one goes to three, so two goes to three, and then three goes to three, three goes to two, so three ends up going to two. That's those two guys there, okay? Continuing on, if sigma is a permutation of Jn, so sigma is a permutation Jn, then we have already mentioned that um, sigma one, sigma two are just elements. Sigma one, sigma n are just elements of j n. We already talked about that, right? Thus to each element j of j n, there exists a new element such that i, element i, such that sigma i gives you j. And so we can kind of say that for each j in j n, there is an i, i such that sigma of i will give you j. This is kind of hinting at going backwards, okay? We can therefore define the inverse permutation of sigma as with the inverse mapping to be the permutation sigma minus one. So sigma minus one is the inverse of sigma, okay? Such that sigma, sigma minus one is equal to sigma minus one sigma, which is equal to the identity mapping. Obviously this identity mapping is over the Jn set, right? All right, let's do an example here of finding the inverse. So we have sigma is defined to be one, two, three, and that gives us three, one, two. What would be the inverse? Well, we can just visually figure this out. So one goes to three, and three needs to go back to one. Three needs to go back to one. Two goes to one, so one needs to go back to two. And, th oh, hold on. Yeah, one needs to go to two. Three goes to two, so two needs to go to three. Okay, and so if we figured out sigma minus one sigma, then we start with sigma, one goes to three, three goes to one, so one goes to one. Two goes to one, one goes to two, so two goes to two. Three goes to two, two goes to three. So we have three goes to three. Does it work the other way around? Let's try it out. So we go one goes to two, two goes to one. Two goes to three, three goes to two. Three goes to one, one goes to three. And so those two are indeed inverses of each other. That's pretty cool. I think that's awesome, okay? Um, 
the identity permutation is always defined to be this. It's pretty simple. The identity is always 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. Maps to 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. Right? That shouldn't be surprising at all. It's fairly straightforward. Okay. Um, if we have multiple sigmas, so we have sigma 1, sigma 2, dot, 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 all up to sigma r. Okay, let me get this straight. So we have those sigmas that are all permutations of Jn. Okay. Then the inverse of the composite permutation, so if we take sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, dot, 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 all the way to sigma r, so we're composing these guys, and we want to find the inverse, what should that be? Right? That should be sigma r to the minus 1, sigma r minus 1 to the minus 1, dot, 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 sigma 3 to the minus 1, sigma 2 to the minus 1, sigma 1 to the minus 1. Okay? So we have to combine these in the reverse order, as we saw from the tail end of last lecture, why that's important. If you're not sure why this works, you can just try multiplying this times that together. Not multiplying, but composing this with that and see what you get back. Should give you the identity. Okay? This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.